Today we are going to present to you the impact of economic sanction on Iranian over Sri Lankan trade. Our presentation based on the literature review and the study of various debate discussion happening at the world today related to the uh, economic sanction on Iran. The structure of the presentation will be in this order. First, economic sanction general overview that will be done by Prabhat, which is done by myself. Then, background of economic sanction on Iran that will be presented by Chandana. The next part is the impact on Sri Lankan economy, how this will impact on Sri Lanka that will be presented by Chandana. Finally, justification and criticism and concern will be presented by Chandana. Let's move on to the first part, introduction to economic sanction. Government and multinational bodies impose economic sanction, that is to try to alter the strategic decision of the state or non-state sector that threaten the, their interest or violate international norms of behavior. Critics say that sanctions are rarely successful. However, supporters contend that they have been more effective in recent years and remain as essential tool in foreign policy. Also, the major feature of Western response to the several geopolitical challenge is the economic sanctions. For example, recent that North Korea nuclear program or Russia intervention in Ukraine. The economic sanctions are defined as the withdrawal of customary trade and financial relation for foreign and security policy purposes. There are two main categories of sanctions, comprehensive and targeted. Under the comprehensive, it will be prohibiting commercial activity with, the, with regard to the entire country, for example, long standing <coughs> US embargo on Cuba. Targeted means blocking the transaction of any particular business group or individual. There is another term called a smart sanction that is purpose is to minimize the suffering of innocent civilians. That means under this they will allow certain uh, goods to deliver to the country like a pharmaceutical medicine, as a food, essential food. Etc. There are various forms of sanction. It can be travel ban, access freeze, arms embargoes, capital restraint, foreign aid reduction or even trade restriction. The general export control, which are not punishable, often excluded from this sanction discussion. When sanction can be used, who, who can impose the sanction? Uh, sanction can be imposed by national government like the US or international bodies like the European Union or United Nations. And why impose sanction imposed to deter or punish entity that endanger their interest or violate international norms of behavior? For example, if, uh, also sanction is the foreign policy goal of economic sanctions are counter terrorism, counter narcotics, non proliferation, and so on, as explained here. Also, sanction is a form of intervention that they will view as a low risk, low cost. Uh, middle course of faction between diplomacy and war. Uh, or sanction is a response to a crisis in which the national interest is less than vital or where military action is not feasible. So this, <coughs> this graph indicates global sanction regimes. There are three main regimes in the global sanction, European Union, United Nations and United States. This part of the chart shows the sanction by the European Union country that include China, I uh, like that. Then this part is the sanction by United States that include Cuba and Venezuela. Middle part includes the country where they have sanctions from all three regimes, US, United Nations and European. Iran is one of these countries. And this is the United countries under US sanction, sanctions currently. There are three categories in this chart. The red indicate the comprehensive sanction that include the country like Cuba, Sudan, Iran. And the pink indicate limited sanction country that include Myanmar and Korea. Targeted field highlighted by yellow is the effect specific 
uh, industry under the designated nationalist in US. There are various countries all over the world related to this targeted sanction. This is another important chart because in the past there are many incidents where there is a sanction violation. If sanction violation happened by one of the institute, they will subject to high fine. Uh, this chart indicates the major US sanction violation case. Highest case is for the VPN Belfast Bank in France. The US fined them dollars, 8.9 billion for the sanction violation. Now, what are the extraterritorial sanctions? Traditionally, sanctions focused on one country that prohibit their business with other. Okay, under the but uh, under the extraterritorial, uh, for example, I will explain this with example because America extraterritorial sanction which aim to deter trade and financial activity with Iran by non-US sector. So we are under this time, I started earlier, they limit the action of other by Iran. So let's move on to the next section, that is where background of economic sanction on Iran that will be presented by Shandam. Thank you very much, uh, Prabhat. Uh, so in this discussion, uh, my area will be uh, why sanctions on Iran and uh, who has the authority to impose sanctions on Iran and the uh, background and the uh, impact on the Iran's economy as well as the Sri Lankan economy. Uh, so when we go step by step, uh, why sanctions on Iran? Generally, as uh, explained by Mr. Prabhat, uh, my colleague, uh, so sanctions basically impose uh, when a certain country, when a certain nation go beyond the uh, globally, ac and the globally accepted norms, uh, when, I mean, the, uh, over and above the, moni the monitoring bodies, uh, they like policies, procedures, if some nation goes, uh, and if that kind of things cannot be controlled through the diplomatic negotiations at the dip uh, diplomatic level, so then the next level is uh, imposing sanctions to control the unwanted activities of that particular nation, uh, which is below, which is before the uh, war military actions. So when we uh, look at uh, <coughs> specifically why sanctions on Iran, the, it is the alleged uh, nuclear nuclear development programs and as well as the human rights abuses in the country, as the United Nations and uh, United States explain and uh, allegations. Uh, on top of that, the development of ball ballistic missiles, which is the major allegation against uh, Iran and uh, against Iran, which is a severe threat to the uh, threat globally uh, in terms of the security of the nations. And in addition, uh, various projects and various developments they, they, they are doing uh, in terms of the uranium enrichment uh, in that line. Uh, which is uh, for the nuclear as well as the power generation as well as the mm -hmm. military affairs uh, in those areas. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so when we uh, look at uh, these things, uh, in 2006, 2006 uh, they passed resolution uh, 1696 uh, where uh, the sanctions started. So when you look at uh, at the next level, who has uh, who has who has the authority to impose uh, sanctions? Against any nation, so in this case, in this case uh, of Iran, uh, United basically United Nations and then supported by USA and European Union are the major players uh, of uh, imposing sanctions against Iran. Uh, th those uh, collectively, as well as individually, they have different levels of sanctions against uh, the Islamic country of Iran. Uh, so when we look at the uh, then background of uh, this uh, sanctions, how it happened. The major incident was the, the 1979 incident, which is globally known as the hostage issue. Uh, the Iranian uh, revolution, and they uh, took uh, US embassy and uh, some uh, office embassy staff from hostage, and they detained them for several months. Uh, uh, I mean, the as a retaliation to the, uh, to the global level and uh, to get the global attention. So we chose the major incident triggered the sanctions issue against the Iran. And then the uh, United Nations passed multiple resolutions again, uh, the, the, tightening the, the 
tightening the uh, pressure on the country on uh, using the tool sanctions. So 1737 and uh, going forward, uh, it's the multiple numbers and which came to a critical situation in uh, January 2012, which, uh, which is the, uh, which, uh, on, at that year, January, they touched the Iranian crude oil market, uh, crude oil supply. Uh, Iran being the fourth largest uh, oil producer uh, in, uh, to the global economy, global uh, petroleum uh, market, uh, that sanction uh, made a huge impact on the global level as well as the country level. To the Iran economy, at the global economy, the world prices and all the there was a serious impact. And then the serious hit to the extreme escalation uh, came into uh, force uh, with the disconnection from the SWIFT banking network. Uh, United Nations, the sanctions uh, prohibited the I army mean, remote Iran from the SWIFT network, which is the global hub for the international transactions. So within a second, Iran uh, lost billions of money which they are supposed to get from the global community in the international trade. Uh, in addition, going forward, uh, that is 2012, and uh, by when, when they reached 2015, you know, under Obama's regime, there was a uh, uh, very uh, important landmark. Uh, they came to a conclusion uh, which is jointly called as uh, Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Uh, in July 2015 and effective from November 2015, uh, which uh, uh, the three parties, uh, United Nations, uh, Iran, and the United, uh, United States, agreed mutually on uh, multiple uh, uh, areas how Iran should uh, react. Uh, I mean, the, uh, what is the, glo the, come the, the global demand from Iran and how they should react for the, those demands uh, regarding the stockpile of uh, uranium and the, uh, the uranium related developments and the, those kind of programs and mainly uh, allowing the international community, basically the United Nations and the US officers uh, to have a transparency about the Iran economy and uh, what they are doing on the nuclear uh, related developments. So in return of this agreement, Iran uh, basically uh, what the major main uh, impact what Iran got is the relief from the nuclear related economic sanctions which 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 means again they were open to the global uh, as a global supplier major global supplier of to the uh, petroleum economy petroleum and uh, then uh, they were again uh, back to the earlier uh, normal situation of the imports and exports they could export and they could import whatever they uh, they want without sanctions. Uh, those benefits as the joint uh, comprehensive agreement. And when we, uh, when we just have a look at the Iran's economy, uh, soon after the global, uh, after lifting of the sanctions, which means in 2017, uh, in terms of population is 80 million and uh, like 20% of the uh, total middle east population is a strong country and these are the indicators, economic indicators showing that they are slowly recovering from the, uh, soon after the sanctions, uplift of sanctions, except the inflation rate, uh, which is going to be a, a serious issue in the country. Uh, when you move forward, uh, when you look at the Sri Lanka, uh, uh, Iran, uh, uh, trade relationships, it's mainly uh, nearly 170 million dollars per year. Uh, it's uh, tea, coffee, and uh, spices export uh, to the country, which is the total 9% 9, 9 of the exports uh, to the Iran exports. Uh, we can see how the trend has been uh, by 2018. And as long as the um, imports are concerned, it's mainly the crude oil and the, for the crude oil, we have very uh, flexible arrangements with Iran, uh, which is going to be the major impact to the Sri Lankan economy. Uh, Sri Lankan government has to go for the arrangements and difficult arrangements once this uh, oil ban happened. So with uh, this introduction, with this uh, information, I hand over my uh, presentation to continue to my colleague, Mr. Chow. Thank you very much, Chandana, for giving me the opportunity. So it's my turn to uh, uh, give you the uh, input from the, my area. The 
main area is to discuss here the impact of economic uh, sanction on uh, Iran or Sri Lankan uh, trade. Basically, the sanction on Iran is going to impact the whole world uh, because the Iran is the, uh, the fourth largest uh, oil producer of the, uh, in the world and it's going to be a huge impact to the whole world. However, our focus is into the Sri Lankan trade, how it is going to impact. So here, the, the, we have identified the three areas that are going to be impacted. The first area is the import and the next is the export and the third one is the foreign direct investment. So let's see how these uh, uh, three areas are impacting throughout this uh, sanction uh, process. So the, uh, when we look at the imports, the 90% of the crude oil is supplied from Iran. So that imports are going to be impacted due to, due to the uh, sanction. So, because of that, the Sri Lanka is going to face a uh, couple of issues. The first one is Sri Lanka is going to lose the favorable credit terms given by the Iran. That will be a huge problem for Sri Lanka uh, uh, because it is going to create some liquidity issues for the country. And Sri Lanka has settled, uh, Sri Lanka has to settle over USD uh, 250 million within a short period of time because that much of amounts are all, uh, due to uh, Iran uh, so this uh, debt has to be settled as much as possible so and the next point is uh, Sri Lanka has to find out uh, the new suppliers of crude oil because the, uh, the Iran no more going to uh, we are not uh, going to take oil, crude oil from Iran in the future. So, and also the central bank of Ceylon has to be uh, more vigilant and strict on each and every transaction between uh, Iran and uh, Sri Lanka in order to comply with the sanction. So, uh, and also one more point is that. The, due to the Iran sanction, the Sapkaskanda refinery expansion project has to be, it has already been given to uh, Iran government. However, now Sri Lanka is in a position where they need to find new contractors uh, for this uh, project because of the sanction. And also, if uh, we are going to, uh, uh, because we have to uh, stop uh, purchasing from Iran. It will further depreciate the rupee value because Sri Lanka has to settle the uh, debt uh, immediately. Uh, it will impact the uh, shortfall of the foreign trade uh, foreign trade balance. So the next area is uh, the import. The Iran is uh, the one of the key uh, importer of Sri Lankan chi. Uh, Iran is the fourth largest market for Sri Lankan chi. Anyway, it is not a, uh, it is not prohibited by the uh, UN sanction or the US sanction. However, as a result of financial sanctions, Iran is not going to uh, pay Sri Lanka back in dollars. So this will be a huge problem for Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is going to lose a huge foreign income. And uh, the US sanctions imposed on Iran are causing a sharp downturn in, uh, in tea industry, tea, tea trade in Sri Lanka. So uh, one more uh, area is, as a result of losing tea quota in Iran, it would lead Sri Lanka to uh, expand the foreign uh, trade deficit further because we are losing foreign income out of uh, tea export mainly and which will uh, negatively impact the foreign trade balance. So and also it could lead tea exporters and tea planters in Sri Lanka to a turbulent situation. So th these are uh, critical issues that uh, Sri Lankan government has to face because of the sanction. And the next area is Sri Lanka is going to uh, lose 
the foreign direct investments from Iran. Iran is one of the key investor of the uh, foreign uh, foreign investor of Sri Lanka. So now, because of this uh, current situation, Sri Lanka is uh, going to lose this uh, all these uh, investments. For example, Sapugaskan, the refinery project, Umawa project, the the Iran is uh, a major part of the investors. So, and as a country, Sri Lanka has to uh, find out, uh, be proactive and find out uh, how to uh, handle this critical economic situation. So here we have identified uh, some of the uh, strategies that uh, as a government, Sri Lankan uh, government can uh, use. So the first one is uh, find alternative uh, suppliers for crude oil. Sri Lanka is depending mainly on uh, Iran uh, oil. 90% oil is purchased from Iran. So this is uh, this is a problem. And so Sri Lanka has to find out more uh, suppliers for crude oil. Sri Lanka should not depend on uh, one crude oil uh, supplier basically. So and the negotiation has to be uh, done government to government. So then in that way we can get a better rate for the crude oil. And Sri Lanka is considering to pay its oil debt uh, with tea. That is also one of the good strategy that uh, Sri Lanka can uh, add up uh, to in this situation. And uh, also, since we are going to lose the uh, market segment of Iran for tea, Sri Lanka has to find out immediately the alternative market segments in the country, uh, in the world. So otherwise, we are going to lose a huge uh, uh, foreign uh, income. And also, as a, uh, as the key uh, controller of the country, the central bank has to place adequate uh, controls in place uh, to monitor and uh, to control the uh, uh, the sanction process and uh, uh, make sure that the Sri Lanka is in line with the Iran sanction uh, U.S. sanction process on Iran. So it will protect us from any. Uh, issues in the future uh, with regard to the sanction and uh, co comply. So that's all from my area. So uh, I am going to hand over the presentation to my colleague Mr. Nihas to carry forward from here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shamal. Now uh, let me take to the other part of the presentation, which is the uh, justification and so on. So let us see the justification of uh, sanctions. The sanctions are in response to Iran's nuclear activities to censure Iran and prevent its further progress in prohibited nuclear activities, as well as to persuade Tehran to address the international community concerns about its nuclear program. Since Iran's nuclear program became public in 2002, the International Atomic Energy Agency has been unable to confirm Tehran's assertion that its nuclear activities are exclusively for peaceful purpose and that it has not sought to develop nuclear weapons. Also, the sanction is in response to Iran's development of ballistic missiles and uranium enrichment continuation. So let us see some criticism of the sanction. According to the Supreme Leader of Iran, the real objective of sanction is to prevent Iran from reaching a prominent civilizational status. A lawyer representing Iran told the court that the US policies on Iran were nothing but naked economic aggression. In September 2018, Iranian oil minister warned Donald Trump, stop interfering in the Middle East if he wants the oil prices to be stopped increasing. 
according to news articles from various sources such as AFP, AP and Reuters, the renewed US sanctions target Iran's car industry, trade in gold and other metals, and purchases of US dollars crucial to support its oil exports and other global trade. Now let us see the concerns over basic human rights impact over children, health and education. Although pharmaceutical and medical equipment do not fall under international sanctions, Iran is facing shortages of drugs for the treatment of 30 illnesses including cancer, heart and breathing problems, thalassemia and multiple cesaries. Because of it, it's not allowed to use international payment system. Recently, a teenage boy died from hemophilia because of its shortage of medicines caused by the sanctions. Deliveries of some agricultural products to Iran have also been affected for the same reason. Drug import to Iran from the US and Europe decreased by approximately 30%. The Guardian reported that some 85,000 cancer patients required forms of chemotherapy and radiotherapy that had become scarce. Western government have built waivers on essential medicines, but those waivers conflict with the blanket restrictions on banking as well as bans on dual use chemicals that might have a military as well as medical application. An estimated 40,000 hemophilia, 23,000 HIV, AIDS patients and 8,000 suffering from thalassemia have severely restricted access to the needy drugs. So, so that is the end of our presentation. Thank you very much.